So as you gathered from the front end, CentOS 7 is not only going end of life, it's also hitting its no longer supported date. That will be on June the 30th, 2024. On July the 1st, there will be no security patches. There will be no support for CentOS 7. Now, if you're thinking about going to CentOS 8, forget it. CentOS 8 was, it went end of service life, no longer supported on December the 31st, 2021. So uh, now what? What do we do? Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. You can't go to 8, isn't it? What options do we have? Well, you could try a, a, a system that was developed by the Alma Linux Foundation called Elevate. Elevate is based on Leap, and Leap is a, uh, I think that is a Red Hat uh, initiative, and they have, Red Hat has proprietary data files under it, but the overlying code, I believe, is open source. At least in talking with Benny Vasquez, the CEO of Alma Linux yesterday, that's what I came away with. So you can take CentOS and you can migrate it to any one of these platforms. Now you have to do it in stages. So if you're trying to get to a version nine, uh, then you're going to have to go through a version eight first. That's only normal. I mean, even even if you were to upgrade in place a CentOS 7 and you did it manually, you would still want to go through 8 because there are changes that you want to pick up before you go to the next release. Otherwise, you might have a lot of breakage and you don't want that. Elevate allows you to pick which, which distribution they, you want. You don't have to go to Alma Linux. I'm sure that you know we would they would like you to, and it's a it's a good uh, it is a good foundation. It's a good distribution, uh, but you can also go to CentOS Streams eight. You can go to Euro Linux. You can go to Oracle Linux eight, or you can go to Rocky Linux eight. Now your choices from there, however, from the eight versions, uh, some of them are still in work. So, for example, if you want to go from CentOS Streams version 8 to 9, Elevate's not going to be able to support you because their work for, to do that part of it is not yet done. If you want to go from Oracle 8 to Oracle 9, you can certainly do that, but not using Elevate. Again, they don't have the tools to do that, but Oracle does. So once you get on 8, you can use Oracle's version of Leap to go from Oracle 8 to 9. If you want to go to Alma and you go from 8 to 9, you can use Ele the same Elevate uh, system that you had. You do have to upgrade it along the way because obviously the rules are different when you're coming from CentOS 7 than when you're coming from Alma 8. The same is true for, our, for Euro Linux and the same is true for Rocky Linux that in midstream, you'll have to stop and, and upgrade. We'll go through that today. But that's basically your options. So yeah, we can elevate this. Elevate is a project that is aimed to provide the ability to upgrade between major versions of RHEL-based distributions, say from 7 to 8, 8 to 9. Uh, it combines Red Hat's Leap framework with a community-created migration metadata library that was created by Alma Linux. And Elevate has been used to migrate production environments across industries and across the world. But, you know, it only makes sense that if you're working with production data and production systems, you probably don't want to just start there. That would really be a bad idea with any kind of migration. Even if you were doing this manually, I would never start with my production environment first. I probably would go put this on a VM first and then play with it using the software packages that I use and have deployed. So yeah, because every environment is going to be different, there's unique things that are based on your application spaces, your configurations that may you may run into issues with. Maybe the those particular libraries aren't in the rules file to help you know understand what the changes are between uh, CentOS 7 and, say, Alma Linux 8. So to avoid any surprises, the best way is to run a test using a virtual machine in a sandbox before you take this into the next step.
Production environments always typically have a, a, a mechanism by which if you're doing something like this, you need to take it through the test environment. You need to go through your test routines for your application and make sure that those things are working properly before you go, oh, we can just throw it in production. Now, I know a lot of, t a lot of th times today we're running in Docker containers, so we don't really care too much about the overlying operating system. So yeah, you, you're probably going to run into less trouble there, but just remember that sometimes when you're upgrading the base operating system, you may also need to upgrade the Docker core utilities as well. And that could cause problems for you, particularly if they have uh, added on functionality that you need to be able to apply to your existing containers in order to move forward. So yeah, again, even if it is simply on a Docker container or if you're running Kubernetes or something like that, still test it out. Make sure that your applications are all working first and that you pass your test routines. Once you're satisfied that all that is good, then yeah, by all means, start your deployment up. Will the migration, I guess, be in place is the one of the questions that is often asked. And yes, all of your data, all of your applications, all the settings and configuration that you have on CentOS 7 will be kept moving forward into Alma Linux 8, for example. The next question is, does this mean the migration is live? No. No, it's not live. It, it, it requires you to reboot the system. There's a, also a pre-migration uh, variant of that you can run first that doesn't make any changes to your existing system at all. So it preserves the environment, but it's still, you know, it's still always a good practice. This is the practice I would do. So once you, let's say you're on a virtual machine, but what I would do is snapshot that and make sure I have a good copy of it as it exists before we start messing around with packaging and adding stuff to the existing architecture because you are gonna be adding the leap packages to your existing system. Uh, and that could even, even that could cause, you know, a ripple effect if it makes changes to libraries that are based that are base libraries that you're dependent upon. So yeah, start with a snapshot so you have a path back. Pez. What is Pez? Pez is the package evolution services. That stores packages, uh, package mig migration metadata. So that metadata will answer questions about how the packages evoke are evoked between major distribution releases. PEZ supports several classes of rules for packages such as are these added, removed, renamed, split, merged, and there's a lot of different ways that packages can get updated. PEZ will make sure that you have all that documented going forward. So this service also allows everyone to improve the data by adding new actions or even create a custom data set for packages from third parties that you're using or even private repositories within your own organization. So you can tailor this to your specific custom uh, builds. What, so Red Hat offers a data set for their version of this, uh, which is licensed. Does Elevate use that same data set? No, no. No, Alma Linux does respect, like I said, Alma Linux respects Red Hat's work. And their initial data set is provided by the Alma Linux OS Foundation with contributions from Oracle. The metadata package is provided under an Apache license. I guess the real world <laughs> big question is why? Why, are, why would Alma Linux do this and not, not only allow migration to their you know, it would, you know, in the corporate commercial world, they, you know, most corporations would only allow this to work on their own, on their own systems. But because we're in the open source community, we have a little bit different vision of how things should work. Ele Elevate contributors have been part of the RHEL ecosystem for a long time. And they recognize that the CentOS ecosystem is a very large and diverse community. So Alma Linux developed this project in good faith in the hope that everyone in the community can use 
and contribute to it no matter which distro they're using. And that is the way we do things in open source. How do you use this thing? Well, first, you need to make a decision which distribution you want to move to because that's going to depend on what your workflow is going to look like down the line. So, yeah. I, I, so let's say, all right, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to use all the Linux. So next, we need to know what version ultimately we want to end up with. So I'm, I want to take... I want to, first of all, I want to fix this problem going from CentOS 7 to get on 8. But 8 is another ticking uh, clock. Staying on 8 probably isn't the best idea if you're trying to move things forward in your organization. You always want to have a path that allows you to grow forward, not get stuck again like that. And for this scenario, I've decided that we need to go all the way from 8 and then all the way to 9. So we have two different steps we have to be able to do here. And that gives us a platform to build on going forward. There are basic, I'm just going to review these in kind of general. So there are seven steps that you need to be aware of that you're going to have to complete for each one of these migrations. So the first one going from CentOS 7 to Alma 8 requires these first seven. So the first is you'll need to update your, your CentOS 7 to the latest package versions. That's to make sure that you're not going to run into any inconsistencies between the tool and the package versions that it's expecting to be on your system. You should be doing that anyway because that's how you get security patches into your, into your system. Now, once you get to your production environments, you may have hurdles that you have to jump through depending upon what certifications are required for that production environment. So that, of course, will slow you down a little bit, but that's okay. The second one is perform a trial run of Elevate, and that uses the leap command, and it uses a, a variant called, an a, a option called pre-migrate. So, and that will run through the, 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 all of the checks and all of the things that it needs to compare both with your configuration, your libraries, and also your packages to make sure that, sure that there aren't any inhibitors for moving on to the next step. Uh, and it, it, if there are inhibitors, it will tell you. And inhibitors are showstoppers. That means that even if you were to start Elevate to try to do a migration, it's going to stop and it's going to say, nope, can't do it. You've got problems and you need to go address them. In the log files for Elevate, they they not only tell you what the error is, but they also suggest mitigation. And in some cases, they just give you the command line. This is the command line you need to run in order to fix the problem. But check the logs and, and look at the migration advice to see if it fits into the way your organization operates. Perform the leap run. Once you've gotten through all of, all of the pre-migration and you're satisfied that everything looks good, now you can start the actual run. You'll make that run, and then at the end, it will it'll either say you've got a problem, and it, maybe it found something, and you've got to address that. You can rerun the run again, because nothing is still hasn't actually taken place, uh, other than it has started to move package down packages down into your cache. So, yeah, it has not actually started to replace anything on your system yet, so as I understand it. And at that point, once you get all those errors cleaned up and you got a successful run, it will tell you it's time to reboot your system, and that's the next step. Now, one thing I will tell you is that if you are running UEFI, before you can... If, before you can boot back into the system, make sure that your secure boot is off or you will get a failure right here. You will notice that there will be an entry in your grub that says something to the effect that this is a DKMS uh, build. And that is the second stage of the migration, which is the part that is actually going to change things in your file system. You'll have to turn that off because the keys aren't going to be there that you're going to need to pass a secure boot check. So your system is going to put a stop to that execution real fast and go, hey, these keys don't match and you need to start with Linux first. 
the you know, you need to start with the Linux kernel. So yeah, that that's the problem you're seeing is just go temporarily turn off your secure boot. So then you should be able to boot into it and run. Now, if you're running BIOS, there's another issue there. If you're running Grub on a secondary partition that is not the master boot record of the device, there's some manual steps you have to do in order for that to work. So just be aware of that. So And I, I don't know how much, if that's very common. I mean... It's common for people that are dual booting a home system, but not likely for a server system to be set up that way. But yeah, at least in, in all my years of experience with servers, which goes way, way back, yeah, we generally didn't do that. Uh, that was generally considered a frowned upon. If you were doing that, yeah, you're probably going to get yelled at by the sysadmins. Again, once that completes and you've successfully booted back up, Check your logs. Make sure that you understand what is going on there. It will tell you which packages it upgraded and which ones it could not. So you can. there are steps in the guide. There are guides on Alma Linux. The links will be below on each step that you can take along the way and what you need to do to remediate and to check your system out thoroughly. I can, I can assure you that there will be packages that you will find that are not upgraded from EL7. And you're either going to have to manually upgrade those or you're going to have to remove them. So, yeah, and be careful when you remove them. Uh, you, want to, you want to make sure you're using YUM, not DNF, because uh, you, can, you can use those as long as you pass it the no dependencies flag. But, yeah, you could end up in a, in a line of tech tips where... Yeah, all of a sudden it starts wiping your system out. That's why we did, by the way, that's why we did the snapshot before we got started. So I would suggest that, I would suggest another snapshot after this this boot and before you start any cleanup. <laughs> yeah, I would do a second, another snapshot and keep both of them. The one that when it was seven, uh, CentOS 7 and one when it's now Alma 8. So once you get all that cleaned up and you've done all the manual upgrades that you need to do, then what we want to do is that we can we should be able to go on to the next step. And the next step after this is preparing the system to upgrade from Alma 8 to Alma 9. If you want to test your application at this point to make sure it runs on 8, I think that's really a good idea to do, mainly from the standpoint of... You need to have, I always had roads back. So if something went wrong going to nine and there was some inhibitor that prevented me from getting there, I had a system I knew I could move into production and run with. The, oh, the other thing, if you're worrying about you have EPL, uh, EPEL, which is the non-free versions of the packages, that's okay. Uh, Elevate has been written to work with it and we'll test that today. I'll put I'll put a couple of packages out from the from the EPL uh, so you can see that uh, and how well that works. But they do support that on all across uh, from CentOS seven all the way up to nine. So you should not run into issues with that. But if you do, report it as a bug uh, because they are certainly trying to support that. So with that. I'm going to go work on the next video and I uh, hope to see you there. Thanks for watching and bye for now.